Right. The words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember then what you received and heard. Keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you still, yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments and they will walk with me in white for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the church says. Sorry, he who let him hear what the spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. So we touched on the last um, church, which was the church of Tyra. Um, when we touched on that church, we looked at that church was not a church that was lacking in good works, it wasn't lacking in love, um, wasn't lacking in faith, was patient and was endurance. Um, but impure teaching had been tolerated in the assembly. So we're going to pick it up back from, from, from where we was down there. So we see uh, the import, impure, impure teaching had tolerated the assembly, which led to uh, immorality um, uh, and idolatry being practiced within the church. Um, here we see in Sardis, the name Sardis means those escaping or renovation that's what it means and the lord reveals himself to sardis as the one who has the seven spirits of god and the seven stars it's it's basically the lord showing the church he has the full wisdom and power of the holy spirit and that he is in control of the churches and of their messengers you see sardis was a church of lifeless profession and it simply went through um, formal routine. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, it did not overflow with spiritual life. You know, it didn't sparkle. It didn't flourish. They had no zeal in there. Um, and what we're seeing here is what's happening in a lot of churches today. You know, and um, what we what we have is, you, you, you know, signs some signs particularly in that shirts of it dying uh, you know being lackluster uh and the people often started works really really well but never brought them to completion so they started good started with zeal on fire for god and then all of a sudden you know they're back in doing the same old things again and uh you know you know we see it all the time we see it we, we see it in, in our eyes are open today. Says, so you know, let those who have ears hear, but also let us let those who have eyes see. We can see, and this is why it's important. You know, from a corporate place where we, you know, really kind of like look out for each other, where we we build up, stir up, encourage, love one another, help one another, strengthen one another. You know, the, the scripture that comes to mind: Iron sharpens iron. You know, and um, it's 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 important that we corporately, you know. Um, love on each other you know look out for each other you know and 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 share our truth with each other because how else are we going to grow you know christ warned them to hold fast that the sacred deposit of truth which they had received to repent of their lifelessness you know unless they awoke he 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 would come unexpectedly to deal with them in judgment basically and that's true to us all you know, we've all got a responsibility and a duty in our faith walk. And we also see at the time that there was a remnant in Psalms which had not lost its Christian testimony. That these believers who had not sold their garments with worldliness, they wouldn't basically, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't walk the walk. They'd talk the talk, but they wouldn't walk the walk. But there was also some overcomers whose righteous acts marked as true believers. So 
it's important to understand it doesn't matter wherever there's a congregation or wherever there's a church there's always going to be true believers that are overcomers there's always going to be you know those that you know are there as powers of example for us as well as there's going to be those that you know that might have a negative spin on their walk but we always can see you know to to to, to see the best out in people to kind of like really you know look out you know and, and 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 call upon those who are strong in the faith and and reach out and you know and and and, and get into that discipleship and understanding and ask questions and you know get involved so it's important and it said that they, they, they said their white garments spoke of righteousness in their lives because they were manifested as genuine Christians. Their names would not be blotted out in the book of life. Some think that the book of life contains the name of all who have been given physical life. According to this view, um, you, you, you know, my study Bible says it says those who show by their being given that they have been truly born again will not be removed from the book, whereas by implication, <laughs> others will. Now we all know <laughs> that's another that's another bit of doctrine, isn't it? Once saved, always saved. <laughs> Ain't gonna go into that one tonight, but that's an, that's another doctrine. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, was it was he a real one in the first place? That's what I you, you know, from a perspective, but it's none of my business. You know, my business is to work out my salvation with Shemble and Fear. And to along the way, they keep my eyes open, you know, to try and help and support, you know, um, those that may be strained, those that may be, you know, backsliding. I've been a backslider myself. You know, I know what it's like. You know, I know what it's like to, you know, to to be ignored by Christians. I know what it's like to be ostracized, you know, because I've backslid. I've been there. And it's not nice. It's quite actually quite painful, to be fair. You know, and but you know what? What I do know is that the Lord never backslided on me. And that's why it's important to understand it's not about man. It's about what God does. Do you know what I mean? I know whatever I went through in my life, in my walk, that my God never left me, never forsake me, was always open, was in the fire with me, that walked with me every step of the way. And, I, and, I, and hallelujah, I, I, I want to share that. Do you know what I mean? If you've been in a place where, you know, you, you've struggled with your faith or you haven't quite got it, like, you know, uh, the next man has got it, you know, uh, and, and it's been a struggle, it's been a wrestle. God has been there with you. You know, and it's been, and it's so important to also understand is that it's in God's time. It's not in our time. It's really important to understand. The other see the book as a register that those who have spiritual life, that they are promised that their names will not be blotted out, that they will never lose their salvation. We see the two different types of doctrine there, right there. You see the paradox. That they will never lose their salvation. And according to this view, the fact that some names will not be blotted out does not require that others will and because of the consistent teaching the scriptures that salvation is by grace not by works and because of the clear statements that the true believer is eternally secure hallelujah the true believer is eternally verse five let's go back to that verse five before i move on into questions verse five does somebody want to read that verse five for me in uh, revelations three verse five Yeah, verse five, it says, all who are victorious will be clothed in white. I will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my father and his angels that they are mine. There you go. There's the crown right there. That's, and that's the prize. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because of the consistent teaching of the scriptures, that salvation is by grace, not by works. And because of this clear statement that the true believer is eternally secure. <laughs> As children of God, never being lost. That the assembly at Sardis is often taken as a picture of the post-Reformation period when the church became formal, ritualistic, worldly and political. That the state of churches of Protestant countries were leaders in this drift. Kevin, over to you. 
Yeah, thanks, brother. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I was just kind of looking at it, you know, and, and just for some anyone that, you know, just a little bit of um, information about, you know, it says Revelation 3, 1, the angel is a messenger of the pastor. Um, and this, ta this um, city was well known for its prime industry was, it's interesting because it talks about white garments as well, and it's harvesting wool, dyeing it, making garments from it. And um, yeah, I was just kind of took a couple of notes. You know, I know your work, you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. So this was an unregenerate church, you know what I mean? Um, and and you, and Jesus is kind of like pulling them up. You know, he said that he was, uh, you know, I know your reputations of being alive, but you are dead. You know what I mean? And sometimes that's that can happen to uh, that can happen to us. Do you know what I mean? You know, the old um, everything seems like it's going all right. We can take a foot off the pedal a little bit. You know, the prayer life starts to get you know a bit dusty. Do you know what I mean? And um, and you, you touched on it, Ivy, do you know what I mean? And, and you know, if you're in the church, if you're actually in a church at the moment, then, you know, praying for other people, man, do you know what I mean? Because you, people, you, you know, you talk to people, people talk, you know, they talk, they, they let you know where they're at and stuff like that. And, you know, that's what we're there for, to encourage as well. And, and but I was just kind of, um, you know, verse three it says, remember then what you received and heard, keep it and repent. So this faith is more precious than gold and silver. It talks about it in Peter, done it, you know, and um, if you will not wake up. And that just reminded me of when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you know what I mean? And he was agonizing over that he was going to have to go to the cross. And every time he went back to his disciples, he goes, can't you stay awake for like an hour? Do you know what I mean? Like, pray with me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And... and um, Basically, they 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 obviously they couldn't. Do you know what I mean? He said, "At least you fall into temptation." Do you know what I mean? Um, sin's crouching at the door. It talks about it in Cain and Abel and that, don't it? And um, and sometimes it just feels like we have to cut off our eyelids when you become a Christian. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that sounds a bit extreme. Don't cut your eyelids off. Do you know what I mean? But um, <laughs> I, I was just I, I, I just a bit of scripture as well. It's just uh. It says here, but the Lord, the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Everything's going to be exposed. You know, we talk about it sometimes when we are doing outreach, you know, Jay, like, you know, it's appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not going to bang on too much about that, but that's why we have to repent and we have to turn away from that stuff. And because our character, you know, is is it being built up all the time and 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 we get stronger and more resilient the more we push through and and that we have that personality change we you know become more christ-like you know what i mean and um and that regeneration in our that spirit in our mind but yeah i'll leave it there thanks for letting me share over thank you kev Trevor, over to you oh yeah oh yeah thank you it's morning yeah so i was just reading this and um really they, this is a hard hit in scripture isn't it it's like mm. ouch do you know what I mean like but like I came to think of it because like sometimes I I always say this like how can people still be like be saved if they're still living in sin and they're still doing this and they're running around like crazy people but they say they're a believer but so it got me thinking about this scripture and um like, I can't imagine Jesus is in heaven, like, with an eraser, like, keep blotting our names out and, like, rewrite, and then, like, like oh, I was done really well. Let me put his name back in. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I really don't think it, it's working like that, personally. And, um, but what I do think is, like, I read something where it said, um, those who are born of Adam are not guaranteed to be in the book of life, but those who are born of Christ are guaranteed have that assurance. So from that, it got me thinking, if you're not baptised, your name's not in the book of life. That's what I came to get to the point of. So 
how many people within the church let's be real about it how many people have been going to church have been attending church for many many years but they are not born again they have not been baptized and been born of christ how many people mm. a lot there's a lot there's a lot of people in my church that don't even think you need to get born again but the scripture makes it very clear here those that are not born of christ will not be in the book of life so what does that mean what does being born of christ mean just because I say I'm a believer, I'm a believer? Or does that mean I got baptized so I'm in the book of life? I don't know. We clearly know <clears throat> that that's not the case because Eclipses clearly say those that confess with their heart and believe with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, then they will be saved. So we know it's a heart condition here. So uh, again, it, that's really important to understand that God knows our heart you know God knows our heart he knows but then why wouldn't you get baptized then as a public declaration of your faith to show your love for Jesus to show that you've been reborn that you've been wiped clean if you believe it and confess with your mouth so much why would you not get reborn it's a, it's a good question can, and, I, can I mention something here? Yeah. Um, far, away, far away now. Sorry, I'll just jump out again. Um, bear in mind that John baptised with water and then Jesus baptised with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Exactly. But then why would you not want to have the Holy Spirit? I think everybody will want to have the Holy Spirit, Gemma. Exactly. So Is there anybody? I mean, I asked a question on there. You know, if there's there's twelve believers on this on this platform right now, if I if I said to you, do you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to receive? Every one of us would put a hand up. Every one of us would do that. Am I right or am I wrong? Oh yeah. Half of the ones I can't see because they're not on the screen. Thank you. Or is it a question that's too hard to put your hand up and say, yeah, I'll be, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to get an engagement here. You know, we, 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 put, we, we, put, we put a question to everyone there. So let's let's be intuitive to, to, to what the spirit is saying to it. And that that is okay. I've got a I've got a majority. I've got four people who haven't put their hand up, five people who haven't put their hand up, so I wouldn't know what's in their heart and their mind because maybe they're not listening to what the question is here. But the majority here is they would want to be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying, Jim? okay but so let's, the, so let's, 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 flip, let's flip it the other way does it does it mean that those that do a public declaration of their faith are you, you know more in tune to, to 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 be in the book of life to those that didn't let's flip it it's not by your works not by your actions it's by your heart condition hallelujah Glory to God. Anybody else want to come in on that? I do. Yeah. Tammy, over to you. I'm gonna. I'm sorry. Hey. Yeah, can I can hear you? Aha! Uh -huh. Hey, hi guys. Thanks for letting me join. <laughs> um, I was listening to Gemma and I was just thinking about the thief on the cross next to Jesus. Yeah, he didn't read his Bible. Um, he didn't. Um, he, he just met Jesus on the cross and he yeah. said like what he said. And Jesus said, yes, you will be with me in paradise today. Amen. So he didn't get baptized in anything. He just believed in Christ, confessed in Christ and asked of Christ and Christ gave him. 
Amen. You know, and I think like from that moment that you realize you need Jesus in your life, he's going to be there. He ain't going to strike your name off no less. And it's like what you said earlier, Pastor, about like, um, you know, he knows us. He knows we're going to come out sideways at times. That doesn't make an excuse to do it. Yeah. <laughs> But he called us and we're the chosen ones, yeah? And we live like that. We live with that faith. We live with that insurance. And we know um, we know we're not getting striked off. And it doesn't matter how many times because we know we've got the Holy Spirit. When we do mess up, you know, we get convicted. Amen. But we know we don't have to stay in that place. So, do you know? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Genuine <laughs> Christians will never have their names blotted out of the book of life. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll share life. something quick. Yeah, of course you can. Sorry, but sorry, brother. It's uh, we all got our hands up, so I don't know where to take yeah, a hand. Yeah, cool. yeah, sorry. So we don't have I, I seen your little face then as well about the four that didn't have their hands up. I was trying to work and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, but brother. Yeah, no, the scripture just came to the scripture just came to me then. But, um, you know, we, it says we love because he first loved us. But then after that, it says, if anyone says I love God yet hates his brother, he is a liar. But anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, who not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. So it's really interesting what you said there about it being a heart condition because, you know, something It's like, you're right, we're uh, either we're not saved by works. You know, I used to cast demons out, but I hated everyone, you know? <laughs> and uh, God allows us, like you said, to, to, to go through those seasons. And, um, you know, and it really strikes me. It's like, you know, I literally... You know, I used to be able, what I thought, to be able to to move in gifts that others, you know, uh, that others couldn't. And like the 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 gifts of God, like you said last week, they were irrevocable. And um, but it shows, doesn't it, that are we really saved? Because if we get that scripture there and it says that if we say we love God but hate our brother, we're liars. Yeah. You know, and uh, and that's why it's so uh, so it's just so so it's just so important that. You know, I, I said, I shared something on Facebook earlier that we check ourselves before we wreck ourselves because it's, um, pride comes before a fall. You know, it's like, it, it is pride that keeps us, I shared it today as I evangelized, pride that keeps us from God, but it's pride that keeps us from living in, 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 in God's commands, in God, you know, God, God commands us to love God, love our neighbor, love our brother. And it is pride. This like, it, it's kind of that little niggle that you have. It's like, yeah, well, I'll love you, God, but I'm not, I'm not loving him because he rejected me. I'm not loving her because she betrayed me, you know? And, and this is what was preached in church yesterday is, is, you know, you'll, you about loving our enemies. You know, if we truly love God, then, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be fruits of that. So that's all I wanted to say. Mm. So the question is, uh, before I go to Kevin, I don't want to lose topic on this because I see we're going a bit off topic. So I'm going to bring it back into line. Um, we can get the Holy Spirit. Can we grieve the Holy Spirit? Can the Holy Spirit depart from you? So there's another question to add into the mix. Kevin, over to you. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to go off topic too far anyway, but, you know, in, John, in, in in the Gospels, it was a baptism of repentance. He said, one that's going to come after me is going to baptize you with fire. And Jesus actually said to him, you know, if you wait till this day here, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And that enabled them to go out and preach. Do you know what I mean? Not everyone's called to be an evangelist. I mean, you know, like it was said already, you know, like we leak, we leak. Yeah. So every day we need to we need the Holy Spirit every day. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If we're repenting, if we if our, we're not conforming, renewing our mind, we you know we can see we've got the spirit of truth in us, enables us to see through the confusion, the delusional thinking sometimes, the pride, you know, the selfishness. And then and then obviously we're ready, you know, we go into the prayer room like a lamb Amen. because we're in the fear of God, you know. But we come out like a lion because we 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 repented, we turned away, and now we we we've asked to be filled up, and 
and, and that's what it means to be in filling because even um, Paul said to a couple of the disciples in Acts, he said, they said, we have been baptised by John, but we don't know about the Holy Ghost. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? I mean, I can get that up as a bit of scripture, but I don't want to bang on too it's long. Not, Do you know what not, I mean? It's not go off topic. We're in Revelations. Let's bring it back and bring it back into line. So we're going, we're going back in here. Do you know what I mean? And you, 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 know, you, know, you know, Ephesians 4.30 says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed. So that, that, that there's a sealing that comes, there's a process that comes in, you know, in terms of, you know, us going through a stage of the believers. So God calls us, God seals us, then God empowers us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then obviously, uh, you, if we're looking at that passage of scripture there, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed for the day of, for the day of redemption. The word grieve uses the verb meaning to cause, to feel, to grieve, to sorrow. In other words, the scripture is exhorting us not to cause the Holy Spirit to, to grieve, to sorrow as a result of our choices. So God loves his children, but obviously he knows that we're going to make some bad decisions. We're going to make some cho choices. He must be looking up in the heavens going, look at my children. Ah! 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 <laughs> you can imagine. You know, think about it. We've all got, some of us got children there, yeah? When we see our ki children doing something, you know, that's not quite right, it grieves us, it upsets us, it hurts us. It's the same. Amen. Um, Gemma, your hand up there? Yeah, I just, I was just, re I was, obviously, I was just reading, reading on a little bit, and it, it says to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, but um, in Luke, it says, because my Bible refers me to Luke, and it says, um, I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the son of man will also acknowledged before the angels of God um so it got me another thing it got me thinking like <clears throat> as a believer when we're talking to non-believers how how often do we fall into that like not giving Jesus the praise forgetting and acknowledging like when something good or even if we're going through trials and tribulations, do we acknowledge Jesus? Do we put him at the forefront of that conversation when we're talking to people? Me and Shah was talking about it the other day. People that don't have Jesus don't don't do that. And um, I think it's a really good thing. Like, do we sort of blend into chitty chatting and just talking about, oh, I'm so lucky, da, 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 but don't give him the praise. And um I just liked how it says in Luke about the angels um, of God. And then it goes on to say, Jesus is talking in Revelations. And it goes on to say to the angels, um, to the angel of the church um, in Philadelphia. Right. Oh, and I just you're think moving, this you're moving, section. We're moving is, into Philadelphia. We're coming into that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying this whole section is all in red in my Bible. And that's quite a lot for Jesus to be speaking because, like, this is words from Jesus's mouth. This isn't from anybody else. Um, and even Revelations 2, all Jesus. Amen. But then we go into Revelations 4 and we're back to not Jesus. So, yeah, I think these words are really profound. Amen. Amen. So, brother, Sister Tammy, can you continue going in because we're moving we're moving forward there eh? so it's great so that we're, we're we're moving in quite nicely we moved into that quite night quite nicely philadelphia verses 7 to 13 please okay, um to the church in philadelphia to the angel of the church in philadelphia right these are the words of him who is holy and true who holds the key of david what he opens no one can shut and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed you before an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of your synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come, make come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. 
Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am, go I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of the heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen, amen, amen. I mean, we're getting a better picture here, aren't we? So first of all, we know the word Philadelphia means brotherly love. I think um, Jordan said something about that earlier on. And, and to this church, the Lord appears, as Gemma said, in the scripture, if he's right, he appears to them as the Holy One, the one that is genuine, the one that has the key of David. As he's going back, so he's bringing in Old Testament, so he's he's he's, um, he's he's confirming himself in the scriptures, old and new. Here we see the Old Testament backing up the new. The key of David is in the Old Testament. We see the 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 absolute sovereignty of God in the opening doors and the shutting of mouths we see that in Isaiah 22 22 that the key of the house of David I will lay on his shoulder so he shall open and then no one shall shut and he shall shut and no one shall open hallelujah so God is in control you know, he chooses us. He knew us before the foundation of the earth. He knows, you know, what's going on before we even ask. He knows, you, 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 listen, he knows our hearts. We've been talking about the heart condition. So he knows who's genuine. He knows who's fake. He knows who's real. He knows who's, he knows, right? So we can't blag God. And, and, it, and to this assembly of Philadelphia, they received only words of praise. They received words of praise from the Lord that the saints have been characterized by their faithfulness. And we see the assembly of Philadelphia received words of praise and, 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 and they have been zealous for their good deeds in their own human powerlessness. My, my study Bible says that they had trusted in the Lord. And as a result, trust is a key issue here. You know, are we putting our own strength in ourselves? Are we putting our own strength in our church? Are we putting our own strength in our money? We put our, then, or are we putting our own trust in the Lord? Then we're talking about genuine here is when we're genuine is when we're putting our trust in the Lord. And I think Jim has said it as well, and giving him the glory and the praise, not taking any credit for what we've done. Now, I can't take any credit for what God's done in my life. Do you know what I mean? And, it, and it's important that that that, that, that praise is 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 is, is 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 extremely important, as Gemma said. He said, therefore, he would open before them a door of opportunity in Christian service that no one would be able to shut. You see, when God opens up the door, when it's God ordained, doesn't matter who's against you, he will see you through. He will bring you through the trial. And I love that passage of scripture. It says, it says, I am coming, so hold on to what you have. Think about it right now. And I want us to just pause just for a couple of seconds here, right? And look at what we've got. You know, we're, we're, we're Monday night when a Bible study, we know that God is in us. We know that he is our father in heaven. We know that all things are possible in Christ. We hopefully know our identity in Christ. We hopefully know who we serve. We hopefully know what God sees us, what God says we are, you know, what the scriptures say we are. This is what God's saying to you. He said, hold on to what you have. Amen. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Doesn't matter what your circumstances. Doesn't matter what your situation. I am with you. Hold on to me. I am. I am. I have you. I've, I've got your back. Don't turn back to the world like a charlatan. You know, and run back to you know the things that you feel more comfortable with. As in, we're talking about sin. Yeah. If you if you come in my power with a Holy Spirit power, I, I can overcome that with you. And within that, with you, I will be the righteousness of Christ in you. And you won't want to do those things that you did before because you won't want to grieve me. You won't want to upset me. You, you'll be, yeah, you become my first love. 
as, as in love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your brothers and sisters. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is all about love, friends. You know, I think it's been said here, if we have no love, we're gone, we're finished. You know what I mean? We can't be coming in there going, you know, I love God, but I don't love, you, you know, that denomination over there because they're talking a different language for me. Or I don't love that brother over there because he, he says Yeshua and I say Jesus. Or I don't love that brother over there because he believes this and, and, and he's a bit of doctrine. We need to learn how to disagree well with our brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what we need to do. We need to learn how to disagree well. You know, we're all brothers and sisters. We all serve the same God. Hallelujah. And it's and it's important there. It says, because the Philadelphians have maintained God's truth by living it before men, the Lord would keep them from the hour of trial. So what he's saying is there's going to be trials. There's going to be temptations. But if we live out this faith, we live it out before others. When the trials come, we will stand no matter what it is. That's what this passage of scripture is saying. We understand the promise of exemption from the tribulation described from chapters four to nine. And we'll look at that, that Christ is coming. We know that he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. But they should not end, let anyone rob them of their victor's crown. Hallelujah. It's near. It's at. The kingdom of God is at hand. Hallelujah. That the overcomer will be made a pillar in the inner sanctuary of God. Whatever else that, that this may mean, it certainly carries the thought of strength and permanent security. You see, this is the key here that we need to be secure in identity in him as who we are in Christ, no matter what. Gemma, over to you. Yeah, there's a lot of food for thought there, Ivor, definitely. And and it's weird how we're on identity again. And obviously we've been on a weekend retreat of talking about identity in Christ. And when you were speaking, I was thinking like, like, yeah, I was saved. I'm going back to the baptism again, this baptism thing. But what I'm saying is when I got baptised, that was when I really understood my identity within Christ. Amen. Like before that, I would be one of them people that would say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm a believer. I'm walking with Jesus. But it was only until then um, that, I was able to really see myself in a different light, to really understand that my past is not me, that I am not that person, that I do not need to go to 12-step fellowship anymore because I walk with Jesus, that he has changed me, he has transformed me, he has renewed me. I am not an addict, I am not an alcoholic, I am not a sex worker, I am not all them things that my past was and he has washed me clean. And then I was able to connect with my identity in him because I was so hard-hearted and that's why for me it's a significant moment in my walk with Christ significant and um it took me a few years to get baptized and you know that because I felt I wasn't in a place I was in a place of sin and I didn't feel I didn't feel I was worthy enough. I didn't feel I was at that place of renewal. And once I started having that conviction from the Holy Spirit of you need to stop this, you need to stop doing the things that you're doing. And slowly, one by one, I need to stop smoking. Like you said, grieving the Holy Spirit. I need to stop vaping. I need, I need to stop doing the things that I'm doing. I need to stop having sex out of marriage like I needed to get right and then through that process through the conviction of the Holy Spirit I was able to come to a place 
where I felt I could connect with my identity in Christ, that I am a sinner saved by grace. And through that, I wanted to give a public declaration of my love for Jesus. And that left me in a place of connection through the spirit. And um, yeah, I just think it's such a pivotal moment in that change of me. Because even you say like, what happened? You are not the same person. You are not the Gemma I first met. Do you know what I mean? And that change can happen. It's not a quick thing, but it for can you, happen. It, for you, it wasn't quick. But it no. can be brothers. Blood was sanctification. Beautiful. Fantastic. Loved it. Lovely. Blood was Gemma. Kevin, over to you. <laughs> it's not an overnight matter. <laughs> anyway um yeah just add into that you know like some some commentary says the philadelphian philadelphian church had a wide open door christ had opened it he opens the door to salvation to the kingdom to service and to witnessing and to the mission field he has all the keys even as the keys to hell and death Amen. And he says, yeah, Paul's alert this to opportunity. So Paul was alert to that stuff. Do you know what I mean? He was praying. He was seeking God's kingdom, his righteousness. He'd given this ministry of reconciliation. You know, he'd, he'd been reconciled. He'd had an encounter with Jesus, you know. And um, and it says in 1 Corinthians 16, 9, for, it, for a great effect, a great door and effectual, sorry, for a great door and effectual is opened unto me. And in 2 Corinthians 2, 12, it says, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, a door was opened to me unto the Lord. And even you could pray this prayer, you know, in Colossians 4, 12, I've prayed quite a few times. It says uh, that God would open unto us a door of utterance. to give me an opportunity to speak, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and even Paul in Ephesians 6 talks about, you know, pray for me that I've got boldness and courage, you know, that when I do get these opportunities, um, that I wouldn't shrink back, you know what I mean? And um, you'd be surprised, you know what I mean? The opportunities that you can get, you know, it doesn't happen straight away, but sometimes you just have to persevere and pray around that stuff. And it goes on to say, if there's any open door, God opened it. No power on earth or in hell can close the door that God opens. And I haven't touched on that. And... Um, it says here, Christ has opened many doors, but sadly, few people have ever gone through them. You know, faith requires action, do you know what I mean? And 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 even when we're feeling weak and we're strong, do you know what I mean? Because we're in Christ, right? And everything's in Christ, do you know? And and that's when we pray for endurance, we pray for patience, do you know what I mean? We don't want, you know, when I was a child, I thought like a child, but I'm a man now. So all that low self-esteem's got to go, do you know? That person's got to go. You're in Christ today. We stand on the truth. If God before us, who can stand against us, right? And um, and we have to own that gear. We have to own it. Do you know what I mean? And 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 the more that we press into it, the more it becomes a part of who we are. Because we can be Christian by name, but then we become a Christian in our nature. Do you know what I mean? And we actually start to really believe this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Amen. Well, thanks for letting me share. Amen. 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 And it's important to understand that. You know, it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to live it out. It's the Holy Spirit that that, 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 that brings that transformation. You know, it's not I, the scripture says, it's Christ in me. Hallelujah. Rory, over to you. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, everyone. Yeah, guys, you everyone's brought some really powerful points tonight. Honestly, it's really, really powerful. I love this. Uh, Kevin. I love what you were saying as well about the open door, talking about uh, the open door here in this scripture. Um, and, um, you know, the Lord speaking here saying, look, set, see, I've set before you an open door that no one can shut. And I think that's really powerful because, um, you know, we were, um, you know, this reminds me of um, assistance. And I'm, I'm kind of reminded of a scripture as well from the gospel which says that a man on a journey, he goes to his friend's door and he knocks and he keeps on knocking and he keeps on knocking and he keeps on persisting and the door's opened. And I feel that, you know, um, especially uh, in this walk, it's, it's that persisting forward, persisting on. 
which is really, really powerful. The open door, I love that. Um, just another thought I had as well about this verse of scripture as well, which is talking about um, uh, to he who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the mm. temple of my God. Amen. And he shall go no more out. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of the heaven of my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Lord Jesus. And I think it's so powerful because, you know, as you go through the scripture, it's like a passage of time. You know, we saw it with the Israelites as the Israelites were passing through and he revealed his name as Jehovah the one which is, which was, and which is to come, the almighty God. And then when Jesus comes forth, his, it's, a, it's, it's a further revealing because the almighty God, Jesus means the almighty God, the savior, the one who has come to save. Amen. That is the power of his name. And you were touch, touching about this earlier. To, um, for if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, that name above every other name and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shall be saved. And this, this thing's really powerful because this passage of scripture, Jesus is saying, I will write upon him, my new name. And it's a revealing um, because in this passage of time, when you walk through that open door, when you go mm -hmm. through that door, when you persist forward and you're at home with him in heaven, um, you can read about this in the last chapter of Ezekiel. And it says in the last chapter of Ezekiel, it says about the city of God. And it says uh, in that day, the city will be called the Lord is there. So our savior now, because this time is for salvation. And in that time, it will be the Lord is there. So I think that's a really powerful revealing of this, of that name of Christ. Amen. That's all right. Amen. That's really powerful. Really, really powerful. So um brilliant. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Beautiful, beautiful. So here's the thing here. Before I go to you, Gemma here. So let's go back to quickly go back to this open door. So the open door, which the Jewish, which was which which Jewish synagogue and pagan cults, they were powerless to shut this door. So we need to understand, we're bringing it back into Old Testament times here, yeah? But this open door, which, which Jewish synagogue and pagan cults were powerless to shut the door. And what it done, it gave um, um, opportunities to preach Christ to all who will hear. If you notice that every scripture at the end of it says, he will have ears with ears. You know, so it gave peace. So, so when we talk about this open door, Jesus is the open door here. Yeah. And it's showing here in the key of David, as in Isaiah 22, it says, the key of the house of David is that I will lay it on his shoulder so he shall open the door. So God opens the door to us to have the ear who has ear who hear. Hallelujah. So we see what he what sorts of ways moving into, you know, and it says it's the absolute sovereignty of that God is opening and shutting that door. And if we look, it says in Revelation 3, 7, conferring authority upon the disciples in Matt 16, 9. So I'm going to go to Matt 16, 9. Do you still not understand? Do you remember the five loaves and the five thousands and how many basketfuls you gathered? He's saying, to him, do you not understand? You know, I'm here. I'm the door open. I'm the one. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I am the life that there is no one that no one can come before me. Don't put me in the same category as anything else. I am the alpha. I am the omega, king of kings, lord of lords. So, so, so here's a reminder here, right? You know what I mean? And, and, and this is what we're talking about here. We, have, we must remember that the God we serve is a jealous God. He doesn't want us to put things before him. Hallelujah. You know, it's like, you know, the book I follow is the Bible. It's not the 12 steps. It's not the NA basic text. It's not the book of cocaine anonymous. You know, the book of life for me today, because I have true life in Christ, the power of Christ has come through me through the life changing transformation of 
the power of God through the power of the Holy Spirit, not the power of 12 step fellowship or my sponsor or the meetings or because I'm 30, you're just clean or because I'm 20, you're just clean or whatever it is. You know, and this is why we've got to be careful when it talks about idolatry. Amen. As a believer. You know. <laughs> you've got to be careful. Be very, 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 very careful. Gemma, over to you. Yeah, my, my Bible says um, after the door is opened, no one can close it. So mm -hmm. salvation is assured. And what, but once it is closed, no one can open it. And judgment is certain. So we're going to be judged, aren't we? And then mm -hmm. it also refers to um, Matthew. And it says... Um, it says... Um, Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Yeah. And what, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And also, I don't know if you, if you did you say the one from Isaiah? Hmm. 22. Did you, say, did you say Isaiah? Isaiah 22, 22. 22. Yeah. yeah. Key of David. Yeah. So it, uh, it, I will place. Um, on the shoulders, the key of the house of David, what he opens, no one can shut, um, and what he shuts, no one can open. Amen. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a seat of honor for the house of his father. A seat, like he will become a seat of honor. Like that, that is, that's a powerful, powerful bit, a seat of honor. Like, that doesn't mean, like, we're running around like lunatics. We become a seat of honour for him. So it's important. Here, 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 we're, here we're talking about, you know, a, a sanctified person living out his Christian faith, you know, being a power of example, being powered by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, because we can't do none of this without the Holy Spirit. And it says, it's reminding us, we need to be in the word of God. He who has ears should listen to the message from the spirit to the churches. Hallelujah. He should have ears to hear. So we need to be in the word. <laughs> you know, the church of Philadelphia is often taken as a symbol of the great evangelical awakening. Not only we need to be in the word, if we're going to preach Christ, we've got to preach what it says in this book. Do you know what I mean? It's great talking about, you know, our lives and everything else. But people want to hear the gospel. They want to hear the words of Christ. <laughs> they want to hear, you know, you, you know the, what he's saying in the book. So in order for us to preach this simple gospel, we need to be in the word, being, being powered by the spirit and, and moving in the spirit because the spirit will tell us what to say to people, and it will lead us to the people it wants to speak to. This is the power of God and not the power of Ivor or the power of Kevin or the power of Gemma. It's the power of God. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and, and this is why the scripture is really important when it says there is no fear in Christ. Because when you have Christ's power, you, you ain't walking around in no fear. You're walking around in the power of God. There is no room for it. Hallelujah. And this is why we need to be in that place where we're in that fresh anointing where we're governed and being led by the Spirit. Amen. Kevin, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Ivor. Iron sharpens iron, right? Do you know what I mean? And if you're in Christ, there's no condemnation, right? That's what we're here for. Do we, you know, let the word transform us, you know? And you're right. You know, the, Jesus was the word of God. Do you know what I mean? He was the written word, the spoken word. And he gave us his spirit to, and they, oh, so we can overcome. Do you know what I mean? And not just that, that we could have a we have authority. Do you know what I mean? And 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 through that we can be faithful. Do you know what I mean? Because the spirit's in us. You know, right? And um, I just want to read verse eight. Um, it says, "I know your works. Look, I placed before you an open door that no one can close, because you have but little power. Yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name." So just going on to that, you know, in today's culture, man, do you know what I mean? Now is the path of you find it, do you know what I mean? Like, 
And you've got to be in Christ today, you know, because a lot of people are shipwrecking their faith today. Do you know what I mean? And um, and in Matthew 10, 22, Jesus turned around and said this. Jesus said this. And ye shall be hated for all men for my name's sake. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, we don't go out there to be persecuted. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, we're having that personality change. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're being transformed in our thinking. We're letting go of bitterness and anger and unforgiveness and all that. So... You know, that's by the spirit. You've, or, or I was told we spoke about it. And it just goes on. The Philadelphian church never denied his name. What do we mean by the name of Christ? It refers to all that Christ is. So when people ask me what I do and I start talking about Christ, I know that I'm not going to get invited to Nando's. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I, I shouldn't laugh, really, because, I, you know, sometimes it does affect me. Do you know what I mean? But I have to overcome that, that part of my personality. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I can't do it in my own strength. He talks about in Zachariah, not by power, not my might, but by my spirit. So I need that part of my mind renewed, quick time. Do you know what I mean? What the old and, chronic um, people? The old chronic people pleasing? Yeah, that's got to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and in Acts three and four is an example of the power of Christ's name. It's already been touched on the the name above every name. Uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. <laughs> I have all the authority, I have all the power, all dominion, everything, I am the king of kings, everything is subject to me, whether they like it or not, even the demons flee when I say their name, Amen. you know, and it says, in, so he goes on to say, uh, we are going to trace Paul's activity for two chapters, so in Acts 3, 6, it says, empowering the healing, then Peter said, silver and gold, I have none, but such as I have, I give thee, right, now this really speaks to me, because this is the bit of scripture that woke me up, do you know what I mean? Uh, it says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Do you know what I mean? And I did. I picked I picked myself up and, you know, and I got on with it. And the man did exactly that. The name of Jesus is very powerful. And his name, through faith in his name, had made this man strong. And it just goes on to explain the healing in verse 4, 7 in Acts. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Peter responded, be it known unto you all. And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, who God raised from the dead, even by him does he, this man stand before you. You know, that's why we give our testimonies, isn't it? We overcome by the blood and the word. Of, we've been reconciled back to our God. Do you know what I mean? Like restored back to his image. Do you know what I mean? We're just working it out through fear and trembling. Do you know what I mean? And, and pressing on and, and getting back up and. And having a go, that's what he wants. He just wants you to have a go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'll leave it there, Ivor. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Word of warning. Word of warning. Word of warning. Yeah. So we're going to enjoy recovery. We're going to enjoy full life. We're going to enjoy healing. We're going to enjoy all great benefits concerning some of these great truths. But we also must be aware that Satan is determined in his efforts to leave in the church. And that will come in with legalism, ritualism, legalistic viewpoints. So all these things that we see, um, money going there, there and everywhere, doesn't give us an opportunity to wrestle with the individuals hallelujah because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood but we wrestle with principalities in high places so when we see this because he who has ears to hear and also who are here has eyes to see this is where we need to kind of like coming back in with the armor it's where we need to be coming in where we need to be praying it's where we need to be lifting up you know not going around putting someone down, gossiping, all the gear that comes with that, you know, the, the, the division gear, the, 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 little, the little traps and the little sneers. It's, it's a time for us to kind of like power ourselves up, you know, and build up and stand firm in unity of the faith. It's going to happen. We ain't got no perfect church. And we are never a per we're never going to be perfect individuals. We're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. Yeah? And it's important that we can that we rebuke and encourage with love. We can have that conversation. 
we can have that you know you know that 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 courageous conversation with each other as brothers and sisters and if we love each other we should be doing that in a way there's 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 that we can break bread with others that we that, that we're not prickly that we're not taking offense that we're not blocking that we're not I'm not going there no more because I didn't like something that happened on the meeting tonight or he said this or she said that. That's not the way we should be going. This is what the church is saying. And we need to build each other up. You know, people are going to have bad days. People are going to say things. People are going to make mistakes. We make mistakes. Amen. Rory, over to you. Last chapter, brother, 14 to 22. Amen. Um, this is the message to the church. Um, in Laodicea, verse 14, write this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea. This is the message from the one who is the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other, but since you are lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, so you will not be ashamed by your nakedness. An anointment for your eyes, so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in, and we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Everyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Amen. So, so, so when we look at this here, yeah, um, we know that the gospel has been preached in, in, in the gospel have been spreading in end times um and we look at this this center where the, the Laodicea it was a prosperous um center um particular um renowned for banking medicine um those type of uh, industries it was probably lo it was located about 45 miles southeast of Philadelphia um and the, the chief deities was Zeus, and he, he there was a, a, a man called Karu, um, who was kind of like um, a god of healing at the time, and a patron for this particular famous city. And we also know that Ephrus, who came from that um, um, region, was likely evangelizing and was um, also preaching the gospel in those times, and he was a faithful true witness. We see um, um, in this particular passage that um, Lodicea even means the people ruling or the judgment of people. And it was, it was, a, it was a final let, the, the final letter is to the church of Lodicea, that the Lord Jesus speaks of himself here again as the amen and the faithful of the true witnesses. It says that the beginning of God's creation as amen, that he is the fulfillment. He is the fulfillment. We see him as a fulfillment, it's genuine. His testimony for God, finally, that he is the originating source of the creation of God, both the material creation and the new creation as well. That we see the expression of the beginning, the alpha, the omega. I am the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. We see that God does not mean that he was the first person to be created, but we see the Lord Jesus was never created. Rather, it's a, a title of preeminence, preeminence 
given to him as a creator. It does not say that he had a beginning, but he is the beginning. He is the one who began all things as the originator. He is the origin of creation. He is the creation of God. He's not the first part of creation, but the foundation on which this superstructure of this new creation is built. And we see the church of Laodicea was neither cold nor hot. It was sickeningly lukewarm, just like the water of the hot springs. When it became tepid, the Lord would have preferred it to have been a bit more extreme. Hallelujah. It was lukewarm enough to deceive the casual onlooker into thinking it was a church of God and so disgustingly lukewarm about divine things as to nauseate God, it says in my Bible. It says further, the church was characterized by pride. We all know what God thinks about pride. I am rich. I am self-sufficient. I am increased with goods. I have money. Look at me. Look at me. We all know it. Self-centeredness is <laughs> for those of us, you know, I have a need for nothing. I don't need you. I'm all right on my own, Jack. Very ignorant. Knew everything. Hallelujah. <laughs> Miserable, poor and blind. He said, that, he said they were blind and naked. The people were then counseled by the Lord to buy gold. And they tried and they tried in the fire in that divine righteousness and bought without money and without the price. Isaiah 51 says, by faith, the Lord Jesus Christ, the by white remnant, practical righteousness in everyday life to anoint their eyes. Hallelujah. That, that the gain of true spiritual vision can only come through the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Your silver and money, I love that what Kevin said, cannot buy you this. Silver and gold I don't have, but the Holy Spirit I do have. Hallelujah. Come. Hallelujah. Father, Lodicea presents a vivid picture of the age in which we live in now. Look around us. Look around right now. We're seeing the Lodicea in the world that we see all around us in our community, everywhere we look, we're seeing this arrogance. We're seeing this self-sufficiency. We're seeing this, I just need a counselor. I just need a therapist. I just need some money. If I, you know, the, 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 the message is, if I get 2.4, uh, nice house, a nice wife, you know, some money, good job, I'm going to be okay. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> That self-need, we don't need God. What do I need God for? Do you know what I mean? Listen, it's here, where we are right now. So whatever interpretation we may take of the book of Revelation, it's undeniable that the church of Lodicea presents the picture of this age that we now live in. Hallelujah. Luxury living abounds to every hand while souls are dying. People are dying. They're dying right now. Because they don't know God. He says many are perishing because of lack of knowledge. So as, as Christian believers, we need to be preaching this gospel. We need to be out there telling people about Christ. Come on. Telling people about sight, Christ is saving grace. Telling Amen. people about the love of God. Telling people about what Christ has done. Telling people about the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not I, but Christ in me. Going out, carrying this message, carrying this message, the simple gospel message, not I want to take you to an NA meeting. That's great. Get someone clean. I'm talking about saving someone's soul. Come on. And we know it's not Christ. It's not, you know, it's not I that saves it. So, but Christ wants to use us as believers through the power of the Holy Spirit to go out into these places where, where, where these cities, these lotuses, these communities, where the bankers are, Liverpool Street, where the medicines are, where, where, the, where, these, where these territories are, and go and preach this gospel. Man. Hallelujah. Spot, spot on, bro. Spot on, man. Where there's places where, they, you know, in your 12-step fellowship, they've got a my understanding, a man-made God. And that might be all right for some, but I know the truth today. And the truth is that most of those people are going to burn in hell, regardless of what they got, unless somebody <laughs> goes and really sits down and speaks to them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit 
use you as a messenger to preach this gospel, to have the power and the boldness to talk to people about the love of Christ, to have the power and the boldness, no matter where you go, to stand up in your 12-step fellowship, in your meetings, and go, listen, I'm one of them. When you hear, when that when 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 you hear people talking about yeah that not that God no I'm one of those that stand up and go listen that's my higher power have some respect because our principles tell us that we need to respect others and their gods so you respect my God whether you're talking from the top table whether you're talking from anywhere not just walk out in disgust with your head down because he's no, no, it don't work like that. If you want to look at the living clean in the 12th step, he says we need to respect when we're going into the fire, when we're going into the furnace, when we're going into, because if you're one of those that you think, okay, well, it's the, it's the, it's the pool for me, the, the fishing pond. Yeah, well, stand out. Preach the gospel. Preach the truth. Amen. Jesus ain't interested in your 12 traditions. Let me tell you that right now. Come on. Hallelujah. He ain't interested in your 12 traditions. Amen. Right? You think when Jesus went into the synagogue, he was... Come on. Don't let me go there tonight anyway. Amen. <laughs> right. Amen. <laughs> so the best of our lives to the business of this world is to turn over the remnants of wasted career to the saviour of wasted truths. And now listen, listen, I'm a 12-step Nazi. <laughs> if, if I had an individual, <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I'm a 12-step Nazi, right? Do you know what I mean? I walk around my blue book for years. I walk around my big book for years. I can quote Amen. it. I can live it. And listen, I get people, I get people clean by it. Hallelujah. Amen. But I also say, listen, the, the, you can get clean but here's the thing, you need this to save your soul. Salvation, come on. Amen. Amen. What 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 can a man profit if he doesn't have everlasting life? Yeah, amen, man. Praise God, brother. All right. So what I'm trying to say is don't be scared to go out and preach the truth. Ask the Holy Spirit for the boldness, the where where you are to carry this message. As well as the other message. That, that God has placed on your heart or placed you in to go out and carry this message. You know, yeah. listen, mate, I see people dying all the time. I take people in my house, get them clean through the big book or through the 12 steps. I sit them in there. I'll give them, I'll, I'll give them a, a, a basic text to write their powerlessness and look at that. But once they start getting a bit of, once they start getting a bit of clarity, I'll talk about my faith. Amen. Yeah. Talk about my faith. It's what I do. It's what Christ has placed in me. Got to be preached, amen. And it's not it's not me, it's the Christ in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, we all got our calling. We all got our placement. But let's let's not let's not move away from telling people about the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's not be let's not be ch chastised or limited or go through any limitations about sharing the love of Christ to anyone. Listen, if you're in twelve step, get yourself loads of sponsors. Hallelujah, and tell them about your high power. High <laughs> power. Get yourself get 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 yourself get yourself a load of sponsors and tell them about the God that you serve. In a your God, of, a God, a God of idols. <laughs> Amen. The general attitude is let's get ahead in the world and give our spare time, our spare evenings to sharing the truth. This is our condition that Christ is coming. And Gemma said it, he's coming to judge. Judge us. Judge the church. You are the church. Come on. God. You are Amen. the church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are the church. This is where you move away from the building. Yeah, man. And it's an interesting question. We've gone through a few passages of scriptures, and I'd encourage you to kind of like really go into the scriptures and say, well, where, where, where am I in, 
in the Laodicea or in the Sardia or in the Samaria, in the Tyteria. What, what does that church look like in me today? And listen, it's not, it's not a place to fall apart in conviction, but thinking, just ask the Holy Spirit to empower you. Yeah. Just ask for that fresh anointing today. Just ask him to come in. Scott, great to have you with us tonight, brother. Over to you. God bless. Praise oh. Lord. Yeah, man. Uh, just that whole thing about, um, you know, being lukewarm. Uh, I think like it was good the way I, I love the way you preach it because a lot of people get that wrong. And uh, sometimes like I was speaking to somebody the other day and it was like, it's like sometimes like, you know, we love God, but there's been patches or times where we've struggled with sin, but because we're still reaching out to God, God's going to help us by the, by the Holy spirit. But if it was the other way around, you know, we were struggling to love God, but we were just in sin. And that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is like what you were saying before, that lukewarm thing. I'm going to oh, I'm gonna put my camera on. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that lukewarm thing, it's like, like people go, oh, lukewarm, hot or cold, spit you out of my mouth. Oh, you you struggle with this and this thing. And then just all this condemnation that comes on people. And it's not good. Mm. It's like we need to be lifting people up and telling them who they are in Christ so that Amen. they can get out of it. Amen. And so, and, and it's like just some people are condemning themselves too much and it's stopping them from doing anything. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like it's like when you think you have need of nothing. When you think you have need of nothing. Oh, yeah, look, I have this. I have that. Like, what do I need God for? And then so people stop praying and this, that, the other. And all of a sudden, when things start to drop off, they're like, well, why is that? Go back to God, start praying. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's just like that, man. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's what I really got to say. Anyway. Amen. Don't let the fire burn out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Listen, it, it, I, I, and the thing we need to acknowledge that it's really powerful, powerful Scott. Do you know what I mean? The thing we need to acknowledge God wants to give us more. Yeah. He ain't, ain't going to give us more if, if we're not if we're not using what he's given us. Yeah, amen. 18, Come on. 18, is it? Amen. It's, it's the Lord who gives you power. He wants to give us more. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, if, you, you know, if he gives us something and we're making use of it, God's going to give us more. If we're not making use of it, he ain't going to give you more. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. you know, it's like, it, uh, those will be trust the conviction some comes to me all the time people ask me for money people ask me for things you know what i mean all the time yeah. god wants to see my heart you know what i mean it's like yeah you ain't worried about whether i i give this or he wants to see what my heart is like what my heart yeah, condition those is will like. be trusted with a little will be trusted with a lot man amen 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 amen, amen. amen. And listen we need to we need to be we need to be uh uh, uh sewing into others, T T T, time, yeah. talent, and treasure. It well, also means our money as well. Don't get does, yeah, man. Don't get it twisted. T T T. That's really true, man. Kevin. Okay, Kevin, close us up. Yeah, I've uh, I haven't really got anything to add. Yeah, but I just wanted to to read Ephesians. Yeah, a little bit of Ephesians. Right, it's some prayers in Ephesians and Colossians, man. If you need. Some inspiration, man. This is how these guys pray, right? So it says in Ephesians 1 15, it says, For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love towards all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remember you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of the glorious inheritance of his inglorious inheritance. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that work he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right. You got look, we've been we've been transferred from this kingdom, man. We're in this kingdom now. Do you know what I mean? And you have got authority. You, it says we haven't got a, a spirit of slavery to sin anymore. You can overcome this stuff, but you have to be in Christ. You have to be getting rid of them dead branches do you know what i mean you have to let him prune you and mold you and shape you do you know what i mean into who he wants you to be and then he and this jesus was getting prepared for 30 years do you know what i mean don't be like the israelites it took god one day to get him out of egypt it took 40 years to get egypt out of them do you know what i mean yeah right 
you can do all things through Christ. Do you know what I mean? And I can get a bit lazy sometimes, a bit of procrastination. I have to admit that, Gil. Admit it. Come out of agreement with it. Hold up a minute. This is what the God. This is what the, the Bible tells me. This is what the Word of God tells me. Jesus tells me. You know what I mean? I, if I'm in Him, I'm strong. Do you know what I mean? And 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 it and it. You know, you just pick, keep picking up your mat every day. Every day. Do you know what I mean? Set aside some time, even if it's five minutes. Keep a short account to yourself. Amen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Amen. And and Amen. He, and he, and you got to remember, whatever the enemy meant for evil, he turned for good. Come yeah? on. We've got to have a go, man. We've got to have a go, yeah? And and you've got to pray for boldness and courage and wisdom yeah. and all that gear. Because we, in ourselves, we ain't got nothing. He says, without Christ, I can do... Without me, you can do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, amen. Ouch, ouch and amen. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. I've sent... Um, uh, Tammy a message and I've also sent Scott a message so please if you can do that for us at some point that'd be great uh, so yep yeah, so that's brilliant you know, what, 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 what do you mean like what what do you want exactly like a test give, give me give me give me a call and I'll and I, and I talk through it oh, okay, okay okay brilliant yeah brilliant 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 so again just want to talk to you about this Saturday we're going to be starting a pr our prayer group so I hope to see you guys coming on this we're praying for specific needs specific areas so I look forward to that. That's going to be our first one this Saturday, Saturday evening, if you're not doing that. There's going to be two prayer meetings opening up from next week, starting from Saturday. Um, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Thursdays and Saturday, starting from next week. So please watch out for that. I'll send the flyers out to, to, to you guys if you want to get involved in um, supporting that. That'd be great. And, yeah, you know, specifically, do you know what I mean? Yeah, we're, we're looking for prayer warriors. We're looking for people to come on and and, and, and just kind of like, just pray out. Do you know what I mean? Just pray out. Listen, we're all sinners, mate. We're all sinners. Not one of us is any good, number one. Do you know what I mean? And we need yeah, to come on. Keep, on. keep on sharpening each other up, you know, declaring, you know, the the, the, the things that try to get into us. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and just really keep stirring up, you know, just really, you know, lifting up, building up and just, helping each other along our way man i just want to just you know just really i'm really excited about this prayer groups because we're called to pray we're called to pray for each other we're called to lift up one and we're called to pray into situations we're called to see breakthrough we're called to see miracles we're called to see this sort of stuff in our world today hallelujah faith live that in our lives today hallelujah so i'm really excited about that and um you know looking forward to seeing what god's going to do because I know it's him that does it. And I'm looking forward to see and the, the, the testimonies, the declarations, you know, the, the truth, the healing, the, uh, the deliverance, all of these things we're going to be seeing. Hallelujah. Because he who has ears to hear and he who has eyes to see. Hallelujah. See. Hallelujah. So may God bless you guys. Um, Wednesday morning, um, devotionals, 6.30 a.m., um, testimony Friday, 6.30 a.m. Uh, and also our two prayer groups, which are starting from Saturday night. So Random one is, quick, quick question. Does, like, I, I'm not sure, sh does, does somebody like have a problem with their shoulder? Amen. No? I just, I don't know why I just saw a shoulder and then there was like something across it. But maybe it was like, uh, sorry, Gwum. I was going to say, I'm, I'm aching from the gym, <laughs> if that but counts. Just, but not a proper, like, not an aim, not an injury, though. No, because it, it might, it, but it might just be something like a burden, like, because it was like, I saw like straps, like across the shoulder. So yeah. I wasn't sure if it was a shoulder injury or just somebody feeling like they're carrying a heavy burden. I don't know. I bet he's got to pray us out, hasn't he? He's got to pray us out, Scott. Over to you, brother. Pray us out, bro. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this uh, meeting. Thank you, Father, for uh, all the input that's been put in. Thank you, Father, for the spirit-driven word, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that, that we'll always remember you like uh, as like when, when you lift us up, Father God, and when we're low. Thank you, Father, that your spirit who dwells in us is, is greater than he who lives in the world, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that it's you that guides our steps. We may plan our way, Lord, but you guide our steps. So, Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, if there's any burden that is heavy right now, you said, come to me or you're weary and heavy laden and I will cause you to rest. 
So, Lord God, thank you, Father, that you're just that your spirit is just ministering to people right now. It's just the the blood of Jesus that, that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus that 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 destroys the 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 the, the heaviness of our conscience that ours allows us to have our ears open in order to to hear you, Lord God, to approach your throne of grace at time of need. So if there's any burden right now that is heavy, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ right now, I'd come against any demonic uh, spirit or heaviness. I'll break its power in the name of Jesus Christ. Command it to be broken right now in the name of Jesus. I break those chains in the name of Jesus Christ. And I, any, any pain that may be in anyone's body, because at first I thought I heard knee, don't know. But anyway, I'm just going to speak that out anyway. So be healed right now. Freedom Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you you are always with us. We don't need to ask you to go with us, Lord God. We thank you that your presence is in us. It dwells in us, Lord. Lead us and guide us by your righteous right hand, Father. Lead us and guide us into all truth, truth that we walk in, holding forth the word of life. Spirit, fill us up and send us out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thanks, Thanks, brother, guys. Scott. God bless you. God bless you, brother. And, uh, Amen. Yeah, give us a call, Scott. Take care, bud. God bless all. Nice God, God bless you, everyone. Bless you, bye, 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 Amy, Chloe, Ryan. God bless God you. God bless you, brother. Sammy, Mike, my, um, Martin, Neil. Bless you, brothers. Bless you, brothers. Bless, bless you all. Bless you all. Take care. God bless you all.